Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to talk about the importance of having a go bag or a bug out backpack in your overlanding vehicle. Um, this video is not sponsored. I will have links in the description. If you want to support the channel, especially important if you do solo overlanding like I do. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to show you my bug out pack and what I have in it. I had a little problem down in Joshua Tree where my Jeep had a little breakdown. It actually somehow, don't ask me how, the oil filter got loose. We were going to do a trail called Burdu Canyon, which is in Joshua Tree pretty remote place when we started the jeep up in the morning the oil started coming out well since i was in joshua tree i was near the town of joshua tree i was able to bum a ride to joshua tree they have a jeep dealer who happened to be open and i was able to get an oil filter and come back if i would have been in the middle of burdu canyon then that would have been a different story i was with a buddy but we only had the one vehicle i could have used my garmin to text somebody you needed to pack out of there you want to be ready so you want to be ready you should always have a good pair of boots a good clothing a lot of extra warm clothing and and a, um, and a bug out backpack or a go bag um, bug out bag all the different names they have for these and you don't need to be a prepper to know how important it is to have a bug out bag and I've talked to some preppers that have given me some good ideas about what to put in a bug out bag so in this in this video I'm going to talk about that that's a little bit of the story of what, why I got to thinking about it I've always carried my bug out bag but since the little deal down there in Joshua Tree I've decided that I need to make sure that that bug out backpack is is absolutely set up for me to be able to walk a long ways out of the desert wherever it is so here in the jeep it's just cargo netting here and it's just stuffed full of all kinds of stuff let me got a raincoat got hats for my wife good to be prepared sun hat warm jackets this is stuff that just stays in the jeep these cargo nets are really handy set it up there and forget it this is great net unless you're sitting in the back and you're tall then you're going to be hitting your head on it the whole time so that's some of the stuff that i have in the cargo net but now the real point of this video is show you guys what i got in my bug out pack so here I am in Muddy's Man Cave, my studio, garage, workshop, place where I hang out. And I want to go through this pretty quick because i got a lot of stuff here. So if you're out and you need to get out of wherever you are, I'm not talking about a bug out pack for prepping to get you somewhere where you got to survive for days and days. I'm talking about getting from a place you're broke down out to where you can get a, a part for your vehicle, maybe get a ride somewhere, get back to civilization because you're planning on getting something and then coming back and rescuing your Jeep somehow. So you just need to get out of there and you need to get things moving. Important thing, I learned at 110 degrees, we did a side hike and we ran out of water. Water is going to be my most important thing. Got a water purifier here and this is the pump type. Um, I can pump water out of a puddle with this. A little expensive. You may not use it that much. If you're a hiker, you're familiar with these because you probably use them because you can't pack all the water you need. Got to have a couple of bottles. Put your water in. You may have to fill one up, filter to the other one. Make sure you're doing that safely so you don't get sick. This Life Straw is not expensive. They come in about a four pack. Uh, thank God at Costco. I've got one in every vehicle. This will save your life. There's a lot of people that just needed some water to survive. This, you can drink out of a filthy puddle. It'll filter it out. Follow the instructions if you get one of those. Uh, the next thing is some first aid stuff. I got a pretty good little first aid kit here. It's just a general first aid kit. I've got, got other first aid kits in the Jeeps, the wilderness first aid kits. This is here I keep in the backpack. A friend of mine gave me this emergency bandage like the army uses for wounded guys or wounded gals for that matter. It's an emergency bandage. This is if you've got some serious trauma. This will stop the bleeding. If you can't stop the bleeding with that, uh, he also gave me this. This is a serious tourniquet. Know how to use it. It's real easy. There's simple videos about how to use this. Really get a bad cut, especially on a leg. This will do it. You got to use it the right way. Know how to use that. The other thing is a snake bite kit. Definitely have a snake bite kit. The first thing with a snake bite kit, this has its own little tourniquet. But if you really want to put a good tourniquet on, you have something like this. Stop the poison from circulating your body so quickly. Next thing is communication. I have a GPS map 66i i've been using this for years i can mount it on the jeep i can pair it with my phone i can pair it with an ipad for a bigger screen it will get me out of wherever i am i can set waypoints wherever i'm going I can enter some GPS coordinates. It'll show me how to get there. It's a great emergency device because it has an SOS. You have to pay a subscription, I believe, to use the SOS, but it has texting and, and email capability. I can set a waypoint wherever my Jeep broke down and I'll be able to find it on the way back exactly where it is without having to drive all over the woods. I can't find my car in the parking lot sometimes, so I would definitely want to set a waypoint to wherever my, my broke down vehicle is. So, so, and then it has the SOS. If you have a real emergency, you need to call in a chopper. If you're on a drive with a family, and you, you break down and your phone is in a place where there's no cell service, you can use this to call a tow truck. Th these are super handy. I recommend everybody have this. I like this GPS map 66i, military spec, really rugged. You might have a different one. There's a lot of different solutions for that, but this is what I have. And if you're gonna be carrying your devices, you're gonna have your phone with you, carry something to charge it with, like a backup charger. 
and the cables to hook them up and charge them. I've also got this little solar panel I've had for many years. I haven't used it in a long time, so I need to check it out, make sure it works. But this could actually charge something up if I needed to. I could, I could put this on the back of the backpack and it could be charging while, I'm, while I'm, I'm hiking out. I've got bear spray and pepper spray. Most dangerous animals are generally your two-legged ones, so you guys out there, you can handle that whatever way you want. Uh, I carry bear spray. I've got my machete. The other thing is starting a fire. I've got fire starter. I've got some waterproof matches. I've got here, I've got a ferro rod and something to strike it with. These which were recommended to me by a prepper dude I met that he really knew a lot about being ready. Bic lighters, he said, they're small, inexpensive. You could have a bunch of them. So don't go anywhere without your big lighters. Don't go anywhere without some flashlights either. I've got battery powered flashlights. I don't want to have to get into recharging a flashlight. I got a couple flashlights. I've got batteries for them. And then the Jeep, I've always got headlamps and stuff too. So if I wanted to bring more flashlights, I could. One thing I never go anywhere without, it's my Leatherman. So this is a Leatherman Wave. There's a lot of different models that have all kinds of different tools. This one has a good selection of tools that can really help you get out of a jam. And uh, who was it? MacGyver, right? I always have the Leatherman in the backpack. Got a bunch of these. This is a real special, special deal. This is a, a uh, trauma scissor called a Leatherman Raptor, Raptor Rescue. It has a a, a uh, window breaker right here. I'll try to give you a close-up of that. It has a seatbelt cutter which folds out. You could also cut a seatbelt with the scissors. You could cut off a pair of boots. You could cut off clothing if you had a serious wound or something. It, it's a really great tool. This sits in the center console and I haven't done it yet but I'm going to figure out a way to fasten it so if the Jeep rolls over this is just not going to just fall out and then not be able to get it because if your Jeep rolls over, if you've ever seen videos, you've been part of it, you know the seatbelts, even if you park on a weird angle, the seatbelts will just hold you in there. I do have a pocket knife with a seatbelt cutter on it. I'm left-handed and I keep this in my left pocket. I can't reach this on a weird angle. It, I just cannot get in there to get this out of my pocket. That's why I got this to keep in the center console. I just need to find a way to make it so if the center console flips open, it won't just flip out. You need to be able to reach it, and you're going to be able to reach it a lot better on the, on the center. This is this is a, a Benchmade knife, a real nice Benchmade. It's a, a Benchmade triage, a little bit of serrated. It's got a seatbelt cutter also and a window breaker. If, if I'm out somewhere, if I'm walking around, I, I carry this everywhere. If somebody needs to get out of a car, a lot of the cars, the windows don't roll down, you know, if they're in the water or something. You need to get somebody out. I've always got a, a, a window breaker here, so and a seatbelt cutter. So this one never leaves my pocket whenever I go anywhere, all all over the place. So I've always got this with me. Thought I had uh, my fixed blade here. I've got a Buck 119. I've had for many years. Might be better to have something that's more of a bushcrafting knife. Gerber makes the strong arm, a fixed blade that you can chop some stuff with. You can hit a ferro rod with. There's a lot of stuff you can do with with a good bushcrafting knife, which would be a great addition to this backpack. Obviously, this is toilet paper and a shovel some hand sanitizer, a little bit of food, right? All kinds of different foods, nuts, dried nuts, and stuff that will last for a long time you could throw in your backpack. I got this rope. I don't know if I would carry this all the time because I have a lot of paracord. I have a couple space blankets, extra shoelaces, these space blankets you can do a lot with. I like to have gloves all the time. Always like to have gloves, protect the hands. This is something I've got come in handy. If you're not an expert knot tire, you can hook stuff up, stuff up and, and tie a knot with this. And here's my backpack that everything goes in. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw everything in the backpack and see how much all this weighs. Backpack's all loaded up. 15.94 pounds. So it's a 15.94 pound backpack. I think I could live with that. So great, I've got my 16 pound backpack. It's gonna help me get out, plus the clothing I've got in my vehicle. If you've been wondering what this was, that's sitting on the front of the table the whole time during this video, this is my walking stick and it has a name. It's called Pigfoot. And the reason it's called Pigfoot is it has kind of a, uh, give you a close up there. It's got kind of a copper, cloven hoof. I kind of put it on here, kind of hacked it in and soldered it up, popped it all on there and glued it. Um, that's what I take hiking with me. That's the end of it that I can hold on to. Do a few things with that. Whoop. Anyways, um, there it is, Pigfoot. So Pigfoot's going to be with me. It doesn't fit in the pack like some nice fold up hiking poles would, but it's got character piece of Northern California redwood sat in the garage for a long time and I varnished it up. Anyways, that's Pigfoot. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Hit that thumbs up button. 
Think about subscribing if you found the video useful. Look for more videos in the future, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. And don't forget, the best is yet to come.